All right, on to our eyelids. Now, the thing about the open eyelids is we're going to leave it blank. It's just going to be a blank file. So don't even worry about it. So click on your eyelids layer. Um, and I'll show you real quick. We'll use our add points tool. Turn off auto weld, turn off auto fill, and leave your sharp corners on. So we're going to make our first eyelid somewhere around the middle of the eye. Just click and then move over. Click again, move up, and we'll create uh, basically a triangle shape. Now with your last point, as long as the two points are overlapping, you just hit space and it will weld them for you. All right, now I want you to select the top point and come up here to your curvature and select the um, curvy looking thing. You can also grab your point and move your uh, mouse to the right and you'll make it more curvy and that's what we're going to want to do because we need to get it to a point where um, it will cover your whole white of your eye. So that looks good right there. All right, now come on over and um, again, if you're debut, you can just grab the paint bucket tool and you can fill it in with a skin color. If you are a pro version, you're going to want to come over here to style one, skin, create shape, select your eyelid, and then hit the space bar to create your shape. And now you have an eyelid. All right, now what we're going to do is um, select, control, C, control V, and then move it over, and now we have a second eyelid that's shaped exactly the same. So that's our eyelids layer. Uh, now we can go ahead and, now that we have that, we can duplicate it over here. We have eyelids two now, and what I would typically name this is like uh, maybe halfway, so I know that it's halfway shut. Uh, and then this one we can name uh, partway. And then what we'll do is we'll select, go to your select points tool, select the bottom row, and now you can uh, translate points. And you can either use, you can either go straight up by clicking and go straight up to, to shrink this, or you can use, um, and this will keep it more even, you can use control and the up arrow on your keyboard. And that way you know you're not going to get off to the right or the left. Because if I use my translate points and I accidentally go like this, now I have them uh, wrongly shaped. So Control-Z will get back to where we were. So now the eyelids are partly closed. Uh, and then another thing we can do, we can duplicate this layer. We'll call this upper and lower. And then we'll go ahead, select points. Uh, control C, Control V, and now what we want to do, now that we have these points highlighted and we've du just duplicated the upper layer, we want to flip vertically and then we grab them and move them down to the lower and then I would select these bottom points and move them up just a little bit to bring them in. Your lower lids are never as big as your upper lids. so. So we'll get those set. That looks pretty good. All right, now I didn't make a fully closed one. You guys can figure out how to do that based on what we've already done. Um, but if you want to animate this, then you come down to your timeline. You would go over, say, uh, 24 frames into it, which is one second. Your open layer, because it's your top layer, is your default layer. So everything prior to um, setting an additional keyframe in a switch layer will remain open. But let's say that at one second into it you wanted to have your upper and lower lids closed. You'd right click on your switch layer and then left click on upper and lower and that will set a keyframe. If you need more information about keyframes uh, or switch layers, see the switch layer tutorial. Okay, I'm gonna undo this by selecting and then delete and then uh, before we move on you have to make sure that you go back to frame zero with this red marker so that we can do our work on frame zero. You don't want to change something two seconds into it because everything after that will be changed and nothing will be set permanently. It, well, it'll be permanently bad, so just put it that way. 
All right, now I want to show you the limitations with this style of face. Here's our biggest problem. I like this setup, it's good, um, but when you come down to the pupils, we'll go and select our layer. If we were going to animate this and we wanted to move the pupils um, evenly, both left and right, we just grab the layer and then they both move together. It's kind of nice. But here's the problem. When we get to the end of the eye, we can't go any further. If we go further, the pupils would move outside of the eyeball. Um, it's fine in most cases. It's fine for simple animation. The problem is I like my characters to be a little bit more versatile, so that's where our uh, second style of face comes in, and I will show you that next. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all these layers, and then we'll start over.